Hi, creative writers. Welcome back to week six of our class. As promised, I am coming to you via YouTube this week since I need to be away, but I am looking forward to seeing you next weekend on March 10th again to talk more about narrative writing. But as promised, I have a presentation for you today that I hope will be a useful um, assessment tool, self-assessment tool as you work through writing your short stories. And also, hopefully, it's something that you can use in the future with your students as well. This is a presentation that I have given at a few different teacher training workshops. So I'm going to take you through the PowerPoint that I use for that um, presentation and then show you how we can use it with the stories we're working on in our own class. And then hopefully you can take that um, with you and start using it um, in your own classes. So here we go. I'm just going to launch right in. Let me see if I can minimize myself and make the presentation the highlight here. OK, so hopefully I'm just down in the corner talking to you now. So we have our creative writing class number six presentation here. And the idea behind this is that I like to use social media as a means for helping students evaluate their narrative writing for a couple of reasons. Because as you probably know, your students are loving social media. And oftentimes, Facebook is much more exciting than anything else that we do in the classroom. So if we can figure out a way to use social media in the classroom, even if we're not actually connected in school, uh, we can make connections to students' lives that make them a little bit more excited about what's going on um, in their academic life. So this is one idea for teaching narrative writing with Facebook. And the objective here is to channel students' enthusiasm for social media into language literacy skills, both in writing and in becoming um, strong, evaluative, thoughtful, critical readers. So why Facebook in Morocco? Well, it's fun, it's motivating, and also it's familiar. You don't need to reteach what Facebook is about. Uh, most students, particularly teenagers and up, will have an inherent familiarity with Facebook already, and they will know exactly what you're talking about without having to provide a lot of detail for them. So let's think about a status update. I've given you a sample here. This would be my Facebook page. And if I were to be updating my Facebook status, this is what I would see in a status bar. And I want you, and I want you to think about your students, to think about how a status update relates to narrative writing and all of the different parts of a status update that you see. So if you were in a workshop right now, I'd ask you to write your own status update, which of course we're not going to do, but we are going to talk about what this status update provides for us. Here's my status update from a workshop recently. You can see a picture that I posted. You can see the text preparing for our workshop at the ALC TEFL conference in Tangier. It tells you how I'm feeling and I can tag a friend. So those are the essential components of any Facebook status update. So when we think about how that relates to narrative writing, we want to first think about what is narrative writing. And we talked about this in our last class. It's any kind of writing that tells a story. And we talked about the five essential components of any narrative writing or any elements, the elements of a story. And we said that those included characters, setting, plot, theme, and point of view. So if we go back to that status update now and look at it closely, at the top you see we have an option to post a photo or a video, which ties into the setting. It shows us where we are and what's going on. The actual text that I'm going to write is related to the plot because I'm telling the story in my status update. I'm telling you what's happening and how my story is moving forward. The next option we have for a Facebook accessory is the option to tag someone. So that's doing two things. It's telling us perhaps about a character, but also it could be telling us about the audience for this post. 
because sometimes we'll tag people just because we want them to see it. In that way, we are specifying the audience or who's important in this post. The emoji that um, allows us to tell us how we're feeling is character development. So if I'm feeling sad, I can make a little emoji that tells you I'm feeling sad. If I'm feeling excited, if I'm feeling thoughtful, those can all go in here through an emoji. And then finally, the little teardrop is our location, which of course ties back to the setting in a narrative story. So hopefully, if you go through a status update with students or with your own self, you can see how this could actually relate directly to stories that we write and stories that we read. So in a teaching workshop, I would give each group a task. They would be assigned a character in a story, and I would ask them to first create a Facebook-style profile for their character, and then next to write five to six status updates from the point of view of your character, which will efficiently and effectively summarize the plot of the story. And I would ask teachers to use all of the available accessories to customize their status post, because those are the details that you want to provide in your story. And then I give this example of what profile includes and then what the status update includes, just as a reminder. And you can see a Facebook profile includes details about your work and education, places you've lived, basic contact information, families and relationships, details about you, and life events. If you complete a character, a Facebook profile, you've essentially developed your character or looked at the character development of a character in a piece of writing. And then similarly, if you use a status update, you're telling the story. We're looking at plot here instead of character development and the different steps along the way in creating this plot diagram or story mountain that we talked about. Can you tell your story in five or six steps? You have an exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and then some kind of resolution can perhaps reveal the theme of your story. And then I would ask you as teachers to reflect on where do we go from here? If you have students do this exercise, what have they done? So in essence, if you've used status updates, students have summarized, right? You've just taught them how to break a story down into the essential five or six steps. One of the hardest things for students to do is to learn to summarize, to not retell an entire story, but to really think through the essential elements of a plot that move a story forward. So they've practiced summarizing. If they're actually writing a story, then they've done plot analysis and they've really carefully looked at the steps in their story that they want to highlight along the way. So once students have analyzed writing and looked at a story this way, they can then take these tools and use them in their own writing. And then there are endless options to innovate and extend using social media. Because honestly, think about Facebook. What could you do if you have students who have written a Facebook profile for a fictional character? They could post it online. They could post their status update and then other characters could respond in person, in, um, what's the word? Basically acting as that character. So they respond as if they're in the story. And you can get a whole conversation going. And then you could have students step back and actually write a story. Use that conversation, use those status updates. Then they have some built-in dialogue, dialogue already with authentic comments from their peers that they can include. Think about Facebook Live, the possibility of having your students actually acting pieces of stories out in recording. So now they're not only reading and writing, but they're speaking and listening as well. So you can include all components of language teaching by using social media. So I want to take a look at our own writing. And here's a spoiler alert. If you have not finished reading Rosemary, pause here. You're going to want to finish the story, Rosemary, before you continue with this presentation, because otherwise it's going to get ruined for you. We're going to do a Facebook analysis on Rosemary right now.
So let's try it. Creating a pre Facebook profile for these characters allows us to evaluate how well they are developed. Are they round or flat? And how much do we know about them? For a well-developed character, we should be able to complete most of a Facebook profile. If things are missing or unknown, consider whether that information is really important to the story. And in your own writing, this might help you to uncover areas of character development that you have neglected. So let's look at Rosemary together. I chose one character, our protagonist, Nelson, because I felt like he was the easiest guy to do. There was the most information about him. So you can see I found a picture online that I thought might look like Nelson. I decided he was a teenager in the 1980s and he was a pretty thoughtful academic kid. So this is the picture I chose. We have his name and then his education. We do know about Nelson. He's about to start a PhD program in Colorado that was provided in the text and that he's also finished a bachelor's degree in English at some liberal arts college in Massachusetts skills that I gave him, he can quote British literature on command, because you see in his exchanges with Mr. Millard throughout the story, they love to quote English literature together. His hometown is important, it's a setting. I put suburbia anywhere in upstate New York, because honestly, that's part of his angst at the beginning. He's a teenager stuck in suburbia, and we know that from the story. To complete his profile, his gender is male, other names that are used for Nelson in this story are alien by his sister, and Mr. Millard calls him my boy constantly. I made an assumption about his relationship status that he's single. In fact, we don't really know. And then other family members that we see in this story are his mom, his dad, and his sister Barb. About you, I filled this out as Nelson. I'm a passionate scholar of literature and a philosopher. I'm fascinated by humanity, I'm caring, thoughtful, and compassionate. Important life events for Nelson include graduating from high school and college and having finally found freedom beyond his hometown. And then his favorite quote, which is cut off in this presentation, says, it takes plainness to help see the beauty. This is the quote from Mr. Millard towards the end of the story. So as you can see with Nelson, we can actually fill out a very robust profile because his character is developed really well. I would suggest if you do this with your own characters in your story, you will figure out whether or not there are pieces that are missing. And then now let's recreate his plot line, the plot line of Rosemary that is. So let's look. Number one, freedom at last, headed to the Millards for Christmas brownie pickup, more than happy to go meet strangers if it means I can break free from that prison for a few hours feeling excited in Corning, New York. Then our next status update, just had the best Christmas visit with the Millards again this year. They are my people. That crazy Mr. Millard speaks my language of lit and sweet Mrs. Millard always gives me a sentimental squeeze. So happy to share my college plans with them. Feeling loved in Corning, New York. Photo of the mice, which was the costume of the year. Our third status update. So psyched to share my news of becoming an English major with my favorite holiday people, the Millards. The man is my Chaucer soulmate. He's lucky to have his guardian elf at his side, keeping an eye on him. Love these people, XOXO. Feeling loved in Corning, New York. And photo, of course, of the infamous two-thirds decorated Christmas tree. Next, I can't wait to see the Millards this afternoon to tell them about my PhD program. They are my biggest fans, and this brownie visit has become my favorite part of the holiday. Looking forward to seeing what this year's Christmas costume will be. At least the tree is predictable. Feeling excited in Corning, New York. Wow, making the best of a tough situation. Mrs. Millard would have been proud. We donned Santa hats and embraced some Christmas quirkiness to get out for a Christmas tree and some holiday spirit. It's tradition after all. Feeling heartbroken in Corning, New York. Santa hat photo and that same tree. And then finally, life lessons and brownies, the theme. Feeling lucky to have found an unlikely soulmate and true friend through a seasonal tradition. Sometimes life lessons and spiritual wisdom come from the most unexpected places. Embrace the plainness for it may help you discover true beauty. Feeling thoughtful in Corning, New York. Photo of those brownies. So if you can summarize your plot line in five to six major events that move the story forward, you've got a good one. So check your own work this way and encourage students to do the same. I have to wrap this up. Check the homework page in the PowerPoint presentation.